meet my office. This is where I film the vast majority of my videos and uh, well, you're probably used to seeing a slightly narrower field of view, but I wanted to show you as much as I could in one shot. We're gonna be walking through pretty much everything in the studio. And I'm gonna show you all the stuff that I use and uh, yeah, so just be prepared. It's not gonna be like an in-depth review of all the components uh, and, and all of the equipment, but I, I do wanna run through the stuff that I use and kind of give you my uh, first impressions uh, and lasting thoughts regarding like things like the desks, the, the lights, the cameras, the computers, the keyboards, mice. You're gonna see all of it in a condensed studio tour of sorts. Also, we're gonna be moving into our new house soon. If I haven't already released that video, you'll know about it soon. But uh, that house has significantly more space. This apartment is super tiny. So I've literally been doing everything out of just one room. And uh, I cannot wait to expand just a bit more, give you guys uh, unique sets and different perspectives and, and videos uh, that we'll film in the new house. But uh, yeah, so kind of a, I don't know, I'm, I'm paying homage to where I've worked for the past year or so, and uh, I wanted to be sure that I filmed a studio tour of this place before I moved and took all this stuff down. Speaking of which, moving vlogs are coming soon, and I will give you guys tours of the new house and kind of give you some ideas of uh, how I want to set things up when we do move in. Anyway, with that, let's get to all of this. There's so much stuff. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but uh, I think you'll enjoy it. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD Key. Then click here, 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 and then here. Paste your activation key and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So let's start with this first. This first desk here is the one you probably see in most videos in front of me. It's my build desk. It's also where I do benchmarks and things like that because the other desks to the left are uh, pretty much filled up at this point. This is a desk from Tribe Signs. I believe it's a 55 inch long, 24 inch wide, and then about 29, 30 ish inches tall. Uh, particle board desk in, in, in essence, uh, although the feet are metal and the particle board is covered with kind of like a wood-like texture, even though it's not real wood. That's how it kept, they kept the cost down. So uh, I'm not going to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on desks that are just going to get scratched up with time. Uh, they look good on video for the price and that's why I went with them. Uh, and uh, you can find this link. It's going to be probably one of the top links of the description. It's pretty good for gaming. Uh, the other desks though that I'll show you in a second are a bit narrower. So if you're someone who likes a lot of space for your keyboard and mouse and monitor and computer, uh, you might want something a bit wider than this. So just mind the dimensions on uh, Amazon if that's where you're going to shop. Now these L-shaped desks are also from Tribe Signs, but you can see they are considerably narrower and uh, that's just a consequence of... I don't know, trying to keep the footprint small. Uh, you could definitely build desks that are bigger than this. We built desks that weren't L-shaped desks, but that, that still had more room than this. Um, and I, I really didn't see a need to have much more uh, depth than this. So uh, if you're someone who likes the space, that's fine. I use my armrest, to be completely honest, to act as extensions. Uh, but uh, they're small enough, they have a small enough footprint that you can put them in the corner of a room and they won't take up too much space. And you can see how much stuff I can put on just one of these. So I have two monitors, I have a NZXH 500 uh, build there, I have my uh, microphone arm stand, and I also have a soundboard over here. And uh, still got uh, you know a few spaces for extra things like books and stuff if you want. You can see I have the little fake plant over there on that side. Uh, so um, plenty of space on one of these desks. I think they run around $100. I'll also link those down below. Uh, but uh, I recommend one of these if you want something that is, uh, I don't know, it just, it looks cool. I really like L-shaped desks, especially for this format here. If you're gonna go with two monitors, I think it's almost a perfect setup. Now, streamers, especially pay attention to this section of the video. This is the Behringer B1. You'll see people swear by AT2020s, 2035s. I have one of those, uh, but I prefer the Behringer sound. The B1 is a really great budget, XLR mic if you want to call it that, although there are certainly cheaper XLR mics uh, on Amazon. Uh, this has a built-in high pass, it also has a 10 dB pad, great for when you're streaming in loud environments, things like LAN parties, uh, for example. Uh, and uh, I love the sound of, of Behringer mics, so that's why I want this. It's an XLR mic, you can see we have a white XLR cable to match the white Neewer frame. This is a mic arm that is Significantly cheaper than some of the competition on Amazon. I like newer products and look if it breaks within a year buy another one You still have paid less than the cost of one uh, expensive mic arm on Amazon. So uh, I, I'm okay with this It's lasted longer than a year and it's still going strong very versatile. You can stretch it all the way out 
given you have enough slack in your XLR cable. And uh, yeah, so you see people mount these behind their monitors, for example, uh, or off to the side of their desk like I've done here, and you can kind of stretch that arm out when you need it, and then tuck it away when you don't. It's perfect for streamers, again, because you can take it out of field of view if you're filming, uh, if uh, that's, that's your vibe, so. Um, yeah, it's versatile. That's the point. You want something that doesn't always need to be in your way or right in front of your monitor, and that's the kind of flexibility that this gives me. Now, as for this PC build, honestly, it changes once a month, so I'm not going to jump too far into it, but uh, kind of a raw overview of the specs. H510 Elite from NZXT. It's a great aesthetic looking case, and that's why I went with it. It's not really for anything else other than the fact that it looks great on camera. It has uh, a 9900K in here, overclocked to 5 gigahertz all cores. It has an RTX 2080, uh, ROG Strix, and yeah, Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 cooler, uh, 16 gigs, actually no, I think, yeah, 16 or 32, I don't remember, uh, gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4. Yeah, I mean, this build will change very soon, but if you're wondering what I'm currently sporting uh, in one of my personal rigs, this is it. The R7 3800X rig is on the other desk, and I will show you that in a second. Now, if you're wondering what kind of phone I use currently, it is the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. And I was actually sent a Pixel 4 for a review a while back. I used it for a couple weeks and I still preferred the Note 10. So that's why I'm on it. I'm not rocking a case at the moment. I know that is super ballsy, uh, but I really like the way this phone feels without a case, even though it is super slippery. So I just have to keep it in my pocket pretty much at all times. And when it's not in my pocket, it's right here on the charging stand. I put it in my office instead of my bedroom because I, I really sit at my computer desk as much as I sleep, to be completely fair with you guys. So um, while I'm working, I can charge it. It'll be great all night. And then uh, in the morning, I still have enough battery because it's it's pretty decent on battery life um, that uh, yeah I can use it in the morning and then charge it in the uh, work hours. So yeah, maybe consider putting your phone charger in here. It's, it's just an option. I know most people put it by their bed, but... Uh, yeah, this has worked pretty well for me so far. Next up, let's talk monitors. I am using two PX275H Pixio monitors. They're 27 inch, 90, I think 90 or 95 hertz uh, IPS displays, and they are beautiful, great for content creation, obviously, so that's why I'm rocking these over uh, higher refresh rate monitors. I do have, again, the other setup that's better for gaming and um, honestly good for content creation too, although I'm, I'm working on making the switch. I'll talk about that at some point in the video, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, these two monitors, you can see there's no stands underneath. There's just one monitor stand uh, that kind of holds both of these up, so it's a, it's a separate yeah, it's not the stock ones, I should say. Uh, and uh, very versatile. You can move the monitors up and down. You can rotate them side to side. You can push them back, rotate them forward. Uh, it's great for two monitors, and that's, again, another reason why I chose the L-shaped desks. Only issue I have with the monitor stand is that it is a bit wobbly. Um, it's just a consequence of having really heavy monitors on these arms and even if you tighten the hinges as, as tight as possible um, there's still some wobble especially if you're like you know typing really hard on your keyboard or uh, slamming your mouse or something like that like if you're raging at a game you'll probably notice the monitors vibrating just a bit and uh, like you get used to it but it's obviously not optimal so if that drives you crazy you might want to pick something else uh, but I will link this whole setup in the description because uh, I think it's great for content creators personally. Now my trusty mixer is an MG10XU from Yamaha. I bought this myself about two and a half years ago and I've been using it ever since so I apologize you see some dust or some of Pepsi's hair wedged in here. You can see I have a channel one connection there. It's the XLR mic uh, that you guys just saw and then the way I connect this to the PC I just have two of these cables here. Uh, you can see one for right and one for left and these connect uh, on the other end to a three and a half millimeter jack, plug that into the mic port on the motherboard or sound card, and there you go. You could also use a USB connection, 24 bit, which is gonna give you pretty crispy audio as well, but I find that this is good enough for what I do. Another reason why I wanted this particular soundboard is because I have room to expand, so you can add a second, third, and fourth mic, actually more if you really want, uh, but four XLR ports, and you can control all of the different, you know, you can control lows, mids, highs. Uh, you have built-in sound effects as well. That's something that uh, most of you probably won't care about, but if you're into, like, I don't know, freaking out your friends with some weird voice changes, uh, you could certainly do that. Uh, and then you, of course, have your uh, volume toggles, your pans left and right, uh, your overall master volume, and uh, your effects 
volume. So now there's quite a bit here. It's it's pretty overkill, frankly, for one person. But again, it allows you to expand a bit. And the price differences between this one and the smaller one uh, kind of pushed me in the direction of this one. So that's why I have it. Now, I haven't shown you guys a video of this yet, so I'm not going to spoil too much. But this is an Asus Tor NAS, and I haven't had a NAS ever. So it's really nice to have this. Uh, it actually has four hard drive bays, uh, hot swap bays, and I have 16 terabyte drives in there in each bay. So 64 terabytes in total. That's a ton. It's way more than I need at the moment, but that's the point. You want room to expand and uh, certainly have that in this case. Again, not gonna tell you too much more about it yet because there's a lot to show you guys, but uh, this little enclosure is really cool and uh, it's a great way to kind of get your feet wet in the uh, networking space. Now this section of the room is purely for aesthetics. You guys typically see this off to my right in most videos, and I think it looks really cool. I think it gives the, the room a unique touch. This is an Edison lamp. If you guys are wondering what this is, many of you have asked about this and I've occasionally linked it. It's just difficult to, takes up too much time to have to go and find the link and then send it to each person who asks. So uh, yeah, I'll just defer you guys to this video if you ask about it in the future, but uh, it's a really cool lamp. I'll show you guys some B-roll shots of this so that you can actually see the individual tungsten strands. It just looks really nice. Uh, if you're wondering about the plant, it is fake. It's just a plastic plant. Now this here is an AMD system, Ryzen 7 3800X, RTX 2080 Ti. It's one of the best graphics cards you can currently buy. Also has a capture card in there. And uh, this is the Corsair, I have to remember the name. I think it's like the 4, 475X, something like that. I probably butchered it, but uh, yeah, you can find this link below if you want. Not the whole system, because I don't want to flood you guys with tons of tech components that you see in other videos. But uh, yeah, this is my AMD system. So I do a lot of testing on this. And then I also do a lot of testing on the 9900K system for obvious reasons. So uh, yeah, I think you guys you guys like this vid. Most of you like this build. Uh, I know it's it's got like a neon green tint to it. And that's really not like AMD systems for the most part. But that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to change things up a bit, so. Somebody said it was puke green. I don't care. I think it looks unique. And panning off to the left, we have another monitor. This is the Asus PG279Q, I think, or QR, I don't remember. It's the TN version, 165 hertz, G-Sync, 1440p. So it's a TN panel, eh, but the color accuracy is actually pretty darn good for this. And you get next to no ghosting because of the nature of TN technology. So um, really great panel. I bought this myself for like 800 bucks a long time ago and I've used it for several, several years. Still running strong, no dead pixels, linked below. Now the camera I use for primary video at this point is the Sony A6400. I chose this camera because for one, it was, a, it was considerably cheaper than another a7 III, and that's what I'm using to film with right now. Uh, and for two, it has really great autofocus capabilities. So all I need to do is set autofocus to auto, and then lock on to my face whenever my face is present in the shot, and it will literally keep just my face in focus, uh, even if I'm moving around the frame, forward, backward. It's, it's very versatile in that regard and super seamless. Most of you guys probably can't even tell that I have it set to autofocus instead of uh, a manual focus, which is difficult to do when you're a one-man show because you have to manually focus while you're not in the shot and sometimes you can get that wrong. So I've linked one of these down below, 18 to 135 mil lens here, uh, which doesn't give you a super wide field of view given this is an APS, APS-C, ASPC, whatever, uh, sensor crop. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, oh, another reason I forgot. The screen, this is like one of the first Sony screens that flips upwards, which is great for YouTubers. So you don't need an external HD monitor. It's great, it's actually really great. And this is the other camera, the one I was originally filming with, the Sony a7 III. I've got a battery grip attached, so uh, you know, battery life lasts considerably longer. Uh, the screen does fold out, but it doesn't flip all the way up, which is unfortunate, which is another reason why I bought the A6400 to complement it. I have a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. It's one of the best shotgun mics for the price, in my opinion. Uh, and then on top of the fact that this is a Sony A7 III, I've also got a pretty beefy lens here. This is a 16 to 35, so it can give you a really wide angle shot on a full frame, which is great. That was the Actually, you saw it just flat out uh, at 16 mil at the beginning of the video. So if you want a, a perspective there, this is 18 millimeter on an APS-C sensor, and this is 16 mil on a full frame sensor. So yeah, it's literally night and day. 
Now as for lights, I've got two LED panels here. These are also newer panels, so they are the, from the same company that also makes the mic stand that I showed you guys over there. But uh, these are pretty cheap. Again, newer is gonna make cheaper products than most other brands out there, but I don't find the quality lacking, which is why I continue to buy newer products. Uh, you have two options here. You can actually control the yellow LEDs to give it a warmer tone or uh, the, the white LEDs for a cooler tone. You can turn both up and you get kind of a neutral white, uh, or you can completely turn the white down and give yourself a more orange glow in the room. So I, I like the ability to control the warmth there, and you can also run external batteries if you don't want to plug each of these panels into a wall. I have two of them. If I didn't say that earlier, you can pivot these back and forth. The second one is over there. Wow, it's like super, super overexposed. Another thing I wanna show you guys, ignore the trash. Did not mean for that to be in the shop, but whatever. Uh, these are little cubicles, or not cubicles, they're little cube shelf organizers, whatever you call them. I bought these from Walmart. You can get them in multiple dimensions. So this is a four by two here. You can get them in two by twos, you can get them in three by ones, four by ones, four by fours. Uh, so I, I've put a couple of these in the apartment and uh, I'll be bringing all of them into the new office when we have more space yeah in the new house but uh, yeah i put a lot of my boxes and stuff in here so a lot of ryzen boxes uh intel stuff uh that's kind of a junk box down there for hd mi cables and uh <laughs> pc power cables things like that i have some speakers some clip speakers packed into here my parents got me uh this setup for christmas and they are bumping got that sub down there as well and uh just some stuff from high school and college on top just to kind of fill up the empty space. And one of the last things I want to show you guys, not trying to flex, but this is more or less a flex. This is my uh, closet. It's not a ton of stuff. I, I've seen even smaller YouTubers have double, triple the inventory uh, that I do. I give a lot of my stuff away to friends and family and uh, yeah, just because I don't need it anymore. And I, I kind of, I feel dirty selling this stuff off because a lot of it I get for free uh, or in exchange for a review or a build video, what have you. Um, so I keep a lot of it and I give a lot of it away, but uh, I'm using shelves from Amazon. These are Amazon basic shelves, but they're actually doing really well. So they're affordable enough that uh, I can definitely recommend them given the quality. Uh, I have all of my motherboard boxes down there, power supplies here, kind of a junk box, toolbox there, uh, CPU, coolers for the most part there. I have my test system on top of there and then vertical brackets for graphics cards on the right. And then all of my graphics cards down there. There's one there as well. And a system that I haven't reviewed yet. Don't look at it. But anyway, a couple more graphics cards up top, some AIOs, uh, I don't know, peripheral boxes. I definitely need a bigger closet though. That's the test monitor that I typically use. That's a 1080p monitor, but uh, yeah, it's pretty small. So it's easy to pick up, put on the table and uh, used for benchmarks. And then my Pelican case, which I reviewed in a dedicated video. Really like the Pelican case. Great for travel when you have a ton of stuff. Now I'm trying to think of anything else I might have missed. Uh, I mean, I have like a network switch, just a one gig switch under there. Uh, I do have a couple smaller testing instruments for uh, reviews. Uh, I do have a Blue Yeti. You guys have seen the dedicated review of that though. Uh, a couple uh, webcams on top. Those are C920s are pretty popular. Um, I have some battery chargers. I have these little floodlights that they're, <laughs> they're meant for outdoor use, but I got them because they're cheap and they, yeah, they give us the desired effects on both sides of the room, add some color to white walls. I do have these really awesome pictures of, whoops, let me brighten up the, yes, yeah, so you guys can see these. So these are like patents and I bought frames to fit around them and I haven't hung them up because there's really no space on the wall currently. See, that's a, that's a firearm. And then we've got, that's a, one of the first camera patents. I know it's probably difficult to see these. And then I have plenty of like movie posters, some of my favorite movies over the years. And yeah, so these are gonna go up in the new house. They're just kind of chilling here right now, but I've just realized that that box is keeping me from, there we go. But uh, yeah, I, I, this is the PS1 patent uh, and I have a couple more patents I did manage to fit on the walls up here. So that's a hard drive uh, patent and then a, so that's a Gibson patent, I think. Um, looks like a Gibson. Anyway, uh, my, my college degrees, a couple more game posters, a few things I got from high school. Uh, that's, I was a track runner, so I have some awards, but um, 
Yeah, uh, the, the the chair. Yeah, this is a Vertigear uh, Trigger 275. Really like this chair. It's an ergonomic chair. It's not like a racing chair, so it's it's honestly more comfortable. That's why I've used it for so long, although it is going to need replacement soon. It is, uh, it's gone through a lot. Pepsi has really chewed through a ton of my gaming chairs. Yeah, yeah, where are you going? Uh-huh. Now, if you're wondering where my PC cases are, they're in a garage not attached to the apartment. That's also where my car is, obviously, but I cannot fit PC cases in this apartment. There's no way that those boxes would fit. I have literally dozens uh, sometimes of PC cases. And yeah, so what I'll do is I'll get rid of them. I'll, I'll, I'll post something on Twitter. And uh, in that tweet, I will say, I need to get rid of these cases, 20 bucks a pop, and they're yours. A lot of the cases I give away are hundreds of dollars and I just either never use them or I use them once, review them, and then put them back in their boxes and they collect dust in the garage. Uh, I charge 20 bucks because I don't want just like one person showing up and taking all of them because they're free. Uh, so 20 bucks is kind of a deterrent for that, I've found. Uh, but honestly, you could do whatever you want with the cases when you buy them. You can, you can flip them, make a ton of money off of that. I had a couple friends do that. Uh, you could give them away, you could build PCs in them, obviously. Uh, so that's kind of how I flush through PC case inventories, uh, but I still have a ton of them to get rid of within two weeks because I'm not taking those with me. They take up way too much space. So that is the studio tour. I hope you guys weren't uh, too overwhelmed. I tried to condense all of this again into one video. There's quite a bit to go through, uh, and uh, hopefully you got some impressions from me regarding my experiences with all the components, all the equipment. Uh, so if you want to make videos like these, uh, then uh, maybe you can use this as kind of like a blueprint of sorts, although you definitely don't need all of this equipment uh, to make quality videos. I want to stress that. Uh, anyway, you can find all the parts. I know I've said this already. Linked in the video description. Pretty much everything that I've showed in this video can be found down below. There are affiliate links, so I do get a small kickback. It's it really like pennies in the, for the most part, but uh, it adds up if uh, many of you check those out. So uh, it would do me a solid. I appreciate that. I don't know why I'm like leaning over like this instead of sitting. It's just kind of, that was weird. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the setup, the studio as a whole, uh, the closet. <laughs> the closet's really bad. Uh, in uh, the comment section below, I would appreciate that. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next one, which uh, I, don't have, I have no idea which video I'm going to publish next, but um, hopefully it's a good one. Thank you guys for watching. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.